And we're super happy to have George Fix here, who is an original Dreamwinder. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's super wonderful. He's going to talk about film. He's going to introduce the movie, and then we're going to watch the movie. Exactly, that's what we got. Um, and then maybe some Q&As afterwards, if anyone is interested, or yeah. hanging out. Yeah. yeah, totally. Okay. Awesome. Here's George. Hi, uh, Yus. You know, uh, we were kind of culture terrorists, and that's kind of what we still are. And um, back, first, I want to say something about film restoration and, uh, you know, and what they've done to this film is fantastic. I mean, I, I haven't seen the print yet, but I've seen a little piece, and the resolution is amazing. But um, I first, uh, what I want to do is kind of fill you in on what led up to Multiple Maniacs, and then you can take it from there. <laughs> Uh, first, uh, it started around 1963. Um, we were all hanging out um, behind the um, in the alley behind this bohemian French restaurant, gallery, bar type of place, full of um, artistocrats uh, of, of various designs: uh, poets, uh, writers, actors, painters, musicians, and the like. And us um, freaks, and uh, we were kind of freaks, and post beats, and pre hippies, and pre punk, and um, the the place was an incredible place. And John's first star attended bar in there in a nun's habit. Her name was Malcolm Soul, and uh, she was the the wicked witch. And when John first started to uh, put together a film, he put together um, Dorothy and the Kansas City Pothead. And uh, Pat Moran was Dorothy, and uh, she uh, pulled a little plastic duck called Dodo, and uh, she met me, the grass man, on the way to visit the Wizard of O.D. <laughs> and uh, there's, a, there's a snatch of it left you can find on YouTube. And it's just about 30 seconds. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's a fragment, but that's all that's left. And then um, Mondo Trasho came after that. And uh, Mondo Trasho was the beginning of Divine's climb to divinity because she had the miracle in the pig pen. And uh, she had to, to crawl through freezing pig shit and mud. and. Uh, you know that was that, that was kind of a crucifixion and a, and a rebirth, and uh, she she was reborn, and then uh, after that we kind of we, we showed it in a church basement of all places, and uh, yeah. and uh, then multiple then uh, Mondo Trasho was uh, just an amazing film, and it, it, there's a big push on now to um, bring it back. But it's going to be a, a, it's kind of a, um, a lot of people have uh, been contacting me about it to see what I could do to talk to John. But John, John says, now yeah, forget it, because the uh, music rights cost a million dollars. So if anybody has a million dollars and wants to restore Mondo Trasho, please step up. <laughs> anyway, no, but um, then Multiple Maniacs uh, came along, and we were all just, um, ready to do it, you know, it needed to be done, and John needed people, and what John does, you know, he writes, he doesn't really need to write characters, because we already existed, and uh, so he just fit us into the stories, and, um, you know, the rest is kind of history, and this was, I guess, uh, you know, it started in 1963, and here we are in whatever year this is, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, you'll see the um, the juggernaut of filth that started back then, especially with Mondo Trasho, and it's still rolling. And John is very happy to 
make sure that it got across the Canadian border and uh, finally got seen in Toronto. And since I was coming up here to, to visit my lady, Patricia Orangeby, and, uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, we saw that it was playing, so I said, hey, you know, I'll, uh, I'll come up and introduce it. So here I am, and here's the film. And if there's any, if there's any questions about the film and, or about the making of the film or the people, and th those of us who are survivors, the Dreamland survivors, I guess there's only about six of us left. Uh, you know, I, I'll answer questions of, about anything you might want to know about it. So, here's the film. Amazing because we actually had some walkouts. Yeah. John, John really did. He told me to give him, you know, a, a report and, and tell him what happened. And, and that was really, I, that was the high point of the evening. <laughs> we actually had a walkout. People can still be shocked. You know, it's amazing. And, and I, I really, I thank John for allowing me to participate in one of the high points of blasphemy over the 20th century. The bee job, the crucifixion and the bee job were like really a high watermark for blasphemy in, in that century, the old one. Anyway, anybody has any questions? I'm, I'm here. Yeah. Did the staff and house and the restoration was just wonderful. It was way, way better looking than I was expecting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I used to run 16 millimeter prints of that that were just really torn up and, you know, pieces were missing. People would steal frames, you know. So when you guys were a bunch of kids hanging out and, and we're thinking, of, you know, we're going to make movies and all this type of thing, and you do Mondo Trash Show, and then you do this, did you guys have any idea? None. We were just. to be what it was. No, we were partying, <laughs> as, a, as they say. We're, I mean, it was just, we were like a family anyway. That bar was where we all hung out and got drunk every night on 15 cent drafts, you know, a Pete's Hotel. And Edith was actually the bartender. We found her across the street in a hillbilly bar called the Lone Star. And I said, John, you gotta, you know, you gotta see this woman. She's amazing. It's just like, she's real. And she was, she was a bee girl in San Francisco in the 40s. You know, she was a real, you know, hope. <laughs> anyway, and, uh, you know, it was just to, to shock, mainly, and that's all John ever wanted to do, was be a, a, a cultural terrorist. And that's what he is. And, <laughs> and, you know, the thing about the, a couple of people wrote uh, that uh, the, the hate culture, that's very, very big and alive now in, Mar in uh, Baltimore and, and the United States, um, you know, with uh, Donald Trump and everything. So the hate culture lives, and, and it was started by Divine back then, and it was kind of, and it, it has a, a political, you know, overtones now that, that we didn't, weren't aware of then. And, uh, but we were, I mean, uh, you know, we were, revolutionaries and terrorists and you know we uh, just wanted to shake things up you know and, and uh, blaspheme and uh, you know do whatever we could to shock people that's all simple as that and, then, and it, it, it just snowballed into what it is now you know we, we were just hanging out having fun being being artists you know Oh, it's. Uh, you watch yourself and think, wow, they were really hitting me with those with those props. Well, I'll tell you what. The thing is, well, you know, but because so many of us are are dead, <laughs> you know, what it is is, you know, kind of seeing those people again, and um, you know, just being glad to be still alive, and and uh, you know, knowing. 
what happened and what happened to them and you know that they're not there anymore and being able to see them is like a miracle you know because if it weren't for that film you know there would be there would be nobody would know who cookie was nobody would know who divine was or you know or any of their david i mean they're all gone now you know so that's the and i you know i see seeing myself it's, it's not like seeing myself because it was like a different human being then. you know we all were is it kind of a, a blur or do you have like a lot of Oh no, I, you know, I kind of remember the 60s, <laughs> kind of, you know, but no, it, it was, you know, it's just, um, it, it's amazing to be able to see it and that, that it still exists and that those, those um, images are still going into outer space, so aliens are being shocked. <laughs> Oh, yeah, but then, and people think that that it, that we improvised and stuff like that, and it was a, but it, John was really strict that you because he wrote every single word and all those lines are his, you know, his pattern, you know, in the bar or something, you know, would, when he would uh, be reading somebody their rights, you know, when they were being an asshole, and uh, you know, assholeism was a major crime. And still is, but you know, people are guilty of it all over the place, like Donald Trump. He's made a, a, a live. He's made a career out of being an asshole. You know, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm wondering. Um, uh, you know, some strange movies uh, uh, in theaters in the '60s, but uh, were, you, were, you, were you guys big movie goers? Oh yes. I'm, you know, what do you see that you think uh, influenced uh, the development? Well, stuff like, uh, you know, well, whatever happened to Baby Jane, um, uh, Herschel Gordon Lewis, uh, slasher movies. Um, you know, John wanted to parody almost every genre he could. And this was a parody of horror slasher movies. It was kind of a horror movie in a lot of ways, <laughs> you know. And the, the, the main thing he wanted to do was, you know, just strike back at the first at the Catholic Church for torturing us. We were all like, you know, tortured ex-Catholics. And he, we just wanted to hit back, you know, as much as possible. And we did, you know. So, and it stands, you know. It's, a, it's an amazing uh, record and document of, of, that, of that kind of reaction to, uh, you know, being forced to conform to every tiny little rule that they could come up with, you know, so we could break, just trying to find rules to break, you know. Yeah. Did your parents see this movie? My mother will not see the movie. <laughs> My mother has never seen the movie, and John's mother didn't see it until, well, I don't know if she, she probably kept her eyes closed. <laughs> but no, they, 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 that's, a, that's, that's a, a reality. Now, a, 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 a lot of our parents, well, some of them didn't care, but a lot of them did because they, we were all, you know, like good little Catholics from, uh, you know, Catholic school. And we want, you know, we, yeah. Did you have permission to choose the church? No, and just, I'll tell you something about that church. It got struck by lightning and burned to the ground. <laughs> about 10 years later. St. Patrick's on Broadway. Yeah, it got struck by lightning. <laughs> How soon after the film? About 10 years. But it was still, you know, we thought, ah. <laughs> it was a delayed reaction, but it happened. <laughs> Yeah. Where did the lobster come from? Oh, well, it came from Provincetown. It came from Provincetown. <laughs> it came out of it. It, it leaked out of Provincetown postcards. Because uh, John, they're now, they're now. Pat and John are are in there, and 
the survivors, are in Provincetown now. They go there and, uh, in the summer. And when you're in Provincetown, all you see are postcards of lobsters and things, right? So um, we've got Vincent Peranio and his brother and I and uh, a couple of other people just put a bunch of chicken wire together and, you know, made lobstura. And then, there, if you didn't see, but uh, Vincent was actually in Lobstora, operating it and humping Devine. <laughs> anything else? Uh, well, you know, and it's, uh, it's an amazing, like I said, it's an amazing document of uh, just what was happening then, only it was the bizarro version. You know, this is that's like a crazy, tripped out, bizarro version, and uh, what? And the, the part in the tent um, where you know we're going to dose people with acid and then kill them. You know, it's just it's just something to make you go crazy and and, and to make people walk out. You know, <laughs> and for uh, for a lot of a lot of the uh, the first showings, a lot of people walked out. You know, and it was hated for a long time. It was didn't get any respect, and uh, and and John didn't care because that he didn't want respect. He j he wanted to just do uh, you know whatever he could to get this respect. Yeah. How did you prepare for your role as Jesus? Well, John, see, like I said in the beginning, uh, he didn't have to write the characters. We existed. At that time, I really thought I was Jesus, and he knew it. <laughs> I had taken a lot of LSD by that time. I started at like 63. And uh, I really did think I was Jesus, and Mink was Mink. And she, still, she kept that name. That's how she got named in that film. And she heard her name. Is, I, Mink and I went to grade school together. She was a brand new, I'll never, never forget the first time I saw Mink, she came marching up the aisle of it, because we had in Catholic school, you have to go to Mass every morning, and so, before school. And Mink came, you have to wear a, a uniform. Well, Mink was a complete, well, nonconformity was also our, you know, our trademark, and Mink came marching up the aisle in her brownie uniform like a Nazi. You know, and I thought, ooh, who is that? You know, and that's, that's what was me. And, and Divine, you know, became, Divine was an amazing uh, cultural icon by the time, by, by the 80s, and by the time she died, she was an international star, you know, and would get, would, had uh, records, um, and, uh, female trouble uh, was, I think, well, people think that, between multiple maniacs, pink flamingos, and female trouble, those are the three main films that still have that still hold the punch, you know. Because a lot of a lot of the films that came after that, well, Hairspray, of course, went on the Broadway, and that's the same thing is going to happen with Crybaby. Crybaby's in the works now to become a musical, and uh, we're, like I said, we're trying to. They're, it's in the works to try to bring Mondo Trasho back because that is a real piece of work. <laughs> and, you know, it's just so funky and put together and just, uh, you know, staged, but it, it looks like it was, like it's spontaneous or, or he just made it up as he went along, but he actually wrote everything and planned it all out, storyboarded it and everything. And uh, you know, the uh, if you see Mondo Trasho, you'll understand where where Multiple Maniacs comes from. You know, it's uh, you you really need to see both films as a double feature. You know, just like you need to see Pink Flamingos and Female Trouble as a double feature. They really, they really go together. You know. Yeah. Uh, uh, will we ever see Eat Your Makeup? Well, I. Uh, that was the thing. Eat your makeup uh, was about you know it, uh, models that were made to eat their makeup and then model themselves to death. 
And then uh, I was, I played Prince Charming, and I came up and kissed them and woke them back up so they could model again. <laughs> but it never, I, you know, I don't know if, a, if an, a finished print of it even exists. It, there, are, there are pieces of it. Um, I don't even think there are pieces of that on YouTube. Uh, that, that's, a hard, that's a hard one, but, you know, someday. I mean, that, we had no idea that, that we would end up in Janus, on, you know, Janus films. When, when I used to go to art films in the, back in the 60s, and you'd see, you know, go to see uh, Bergman and Fellini and Kurosawa, they were brought, they, they were distributed by Janus Films. Of course, now Criterion has all of Janus, and so if you get to be a Criterion title, that, you're an art film. And one of the, uh, one of the, I think it was the Village Voice or one or the New York Times that uh, actually, you know, called John a film artist and compared the uh, bead job and crucifixion desecration to um, Pasolini. <laughs> you know, go figure. <laughs> but it, 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 when you think about it, there's, you know, if you can think about it deeply, uh, it, it does kind of have that undertow, that, that uh, a, a real kind of crazy artistic value. Uh, you know, it really does, and it's because it, it was, it was, a, it was a made as, a, as a, a, an act of love, a piece of art, uh, you know, uh, just to make it, not to make money, just to shock people, just to shock, you know, priests and cops and, you know, all, anybody in authority. Yeah. Yes? <laughs> he borrowed it from his father, and he paid every penny back. We met, you know, we made the money back. He, his dad was, uh, you know, wasn't wealthy or anything, but he was able to talk his dad into lending him the money. And uh, then from after that, we did fundraising and stuff, but um, he scraped the money together somehow. You know how you do when, <laughs> when you need something. Uh, you find a way to do it. Now, because that's what kind of what art is, is taking the, the world or whatever you can grab or whatever grabs you and making art out of it. That, that's, you know, you express in imagery all the emotions that you have or all the loves or hatreds or whatever, you know. And that's, uh, that's kind of why he made it, just just to make it, you know, and no, we, we really didn't think that it would go any farther. When it, when it hit the Elgin and became a midnight show and, and outsold El Topo, and we thought, whoa, <laughs> what's going on here? These people, uh, they're not supposed to like this. They're, you know, they're, just, they're supposed to hate it, and, and we, we wanted to be reviled, but instead, you know, I'm standing here. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Yeah, you know, um, it's uh, his his later films are not, you know, don't have the impact, and some of them uh, are actually even, you know, unwatchable. <laughs> but like like Dirty Shame. But but you know, John doesn't care. He didn't, he didn't really do it to make money, and uh, the New Line knew that, you know, and, and um, so it was their, their fault they, you know, that they lost money. <laughs> they, they knew what they were doing, you know, just like when you commit a crime. <laughs> you know what you're doing, you, you pay for it, however you're going to pay for it. Because we, you know, we're, we're cynic criminals. Okay, thank you. And uh, yeah. wait for Mar wait, wait for uh, Mondo Trasho. It'll it'll be out. They'll, they'll 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 find some way to raise the money to pay for the, the music. Uh, you know the the rights. 
were uh, really highly disputed. And when, once John started uh, be, being really popular, then the, the prices went up and up and up. So, you know, it's kind of blackmail ransom or something. <laughs> but it will come out immediately. I mean, I mean uh, eventually. <laughs> All right. Thanks, folks. John, thank you. Right, sick. That's right. I love that. That's yeah. sick. Yeah. Well, I think everybody does. Yeah. And Bob's still with us. And Bob, I, Bob was the guy was with the curly hair who was. Oh, the, yeah. oh Ernie. Yeah. Ernie. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah.